Welcome to the fourth video in this series, creating atmospheric nighttime renders in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we're going to be focusing on setting up the camera angle and composition of our particular shot. Now, the camera angle can have a big effect on how your final visualization is perceived. If you wanted to show your project within the context of a larger kind of environmental setting, you might choose a landscape shot over a portrait one. Whereas if you wanted to focus in on a taller detail, you might switch to a portrait aspect ratio. And each of these may have a different effect on the way that that image is perceived. As you can see here, I've got the same shot from multiple different aspect ratios and suddenly the kind of focus and attention of the view switches depending on which of these you use. Now we're going to begin by setting up that aspect ratio for our shot and that can be done by going to our V-Ray Asset Editor. We're going to open this up and in the settings tab we're going to go down to the render output and you can find your aspect ratio here. By default it will probably be set to a 16 by 9 widescreen and we're going to set this down to a custom and this will allow us to type in any aspect ratio that we want to use for the shot. For this I'm going to set it to a 1 to 1 aspect ratio and you'll find that your kind of pixel size, your render output here, will match whatever ratio you set. And I'm going to keep it at 800 by 800 for now. Once you've set your ratio, we're then going to open up the V-Ray frame buffer here. And we're just going to start the interactive renderer, that scene. And that's just going to render out whatever view we're currently looking at in this model. And we can just pan around the model and start to try and pick out certain key views we think might be interesting for our shot. Now it might be that you have a particular image in mind that you want to create with this model or it might be that you're trying to kind of use the rendered model to understand the best angle that you can get a kind of render or visualization from it. I usually kind of treat this as if you're a photographer sort of working your way around the building trying to kind of pick out the best angle in the rendered view as we move. Now for this particular shot I know I kind of want to get the building on the hill we want to be a little bit further back so we're almost sort of seeing it at the top of this hill as if we were kind of approaching this building from the bottom and I usually just use a combination of the sort of rotate tools the zoom and pan to kind of get my camera in the right position now once you've got an angle that you're kind of happy with and you think is about right what we then need to ask ourselves is is this camera going to be at a person's eye level view or will it be a kind of floating aerial perspective camera for this particular shot, I want to make this sort of image seem as if you were walking up to the building in the evening. So I want the camera to be at that eye level height so it feels as if we are kind of placed within the view. It's very important when you do this that you really do set that camera to the accurate height because it will make everything else feel in proportion within that view. If it's slightly off, it can kind of sometimes feel that certain things are bigger or smaller than they should be because we are very aware of what that eye level height feels like when we're looking at certain kind of structures or kind of key features that we know well. So to set up an eye level camera, what we're gonna do is we'll just stop that render there. And we're essentially gonna use a couple of bits of geometry to set up the view that we know is going to be at exactly that person's height. Now we're going to just use the box tool for this. I'm just going to zoom back and my camera was around this area. So we're just going to draw out a box and we're going to make sure it's the same height as the average person, which is around a 1.6, 1.7 meter high box there. Once we've made that, we're then going to just move that into position just so it sits on that terrain like so and you might need to move it down a little bit there and this is going to be the location of our camera now it might be a bit far away you might always want to sort of just move it into the approximate location always making sure that it just sits on top of that plane like so once we've made our camera position we're then going to copy this box and make another box which is going to be the target for the camera and we're just using the copy tool here to create a copy of that box there now we want to make sure we just move this camera on the X and the Y axis, so just using the gumball here to do that, because we want this box to be exactly the same eye level as our camera box. This will mean that when we put the camera in using these two points as guides for this, that our camera is not going to be panning up or panning down and creating a weird distortion on our view. So now I've placed those two boxes in. You can see this box basically is pointing in the direction of the building. It doesn't need to be exactly at the target location, but just needs to be in that general direction. And this is going to be the point where our camera starts. Once we've got those two boxes in the right position, we're then going to go to view. 
set camera and place camera and target. Now this tool here allows us to place the camera on the first box we've got here and the target location on the second box. And once we click that, you'll see that the kind of view in Rhino is now snapped to that location and we've got our nice eye level view there. We can actually hide the boxes once we've done that because we don't need them any longer. Now what you might find is once we sort of open that up and start that render, and it might look a little bit different to what you've expected. I mean, here I've got a lot of foreground in the scene because we're a little bit lower down this hill. Now for this shot, I'm going to slightly tweak that. And it's always good once you've sort of set it up at eye level just to kind of have a play around, just to sort of get that exactly how you want it. So I'm going to just pan my view over a bit. I actually wanted to be a bit closer. So we're going to zoom in to this view like so. And I'm being careful not to sort of pan up too much because if we pan up, it's going to offset that eye level height and will no longer be at the correct eye level of a person. I think somewhere around there is good. You can also play around and tweak the lens length of the camera. If you want it to be a slightly flatter shot, we can up that lens length and it will zoom in and flatten the perspective. If we want to kind of make it a bit more perspective, and zoom out then we can lower that number and it's all about sort of just working out what looks right for the particular shot you're doing i think i'm going to just have it maybe around a sort of 52 for now i think we'll pan this up slightly now i'm not too worried about the foreground in this shot because later on we're going to add some water in the foreground here which is going to cause a reflection of this building in the lower half of this frame so i think i'm kind of happy with that and you'll find that when we start to add in textures and other pieces, this camera angle might get slightly tweaked as we do that. So don't worry too much if it's not sort of super perfect at this stage. Essentially, we're just trying to block out the rough angle that we're going to be using for our view. Another kind of useful thing when you're setting your view is if we open up V-Ray, under Render Output in the settings, there's this little Save Frames option here. If we turn it on and just minimize this scene, you can see that we now have that frame that matches the render in this view. And this is quite useful when we're trying to sort of pick the location of the shot or sort of trying to frame up our building. We can use these save frames to help us understand exactly where those kind of extents of the image are. So once you're happy with your shot and we've got the right angle there, we then need to make sure we save out this camera so we don't lose this particular view in our image. To do this, we're going to go to view, set view, and named views here. This will open up this new window, which I then usually just dock on the side here just by hovering it over the properties panel. And to save a view, we can just hit the save as, and we'll save this as camera one there. And now that view is saved. And what that means is we can now start to pan around. We can start to do other bits on the model. If we want to go back to our view we've chosen, we just double click in the named views and we snap back to that. So it's always really important to make sure you're saving out all of your cameras whenever you're setting up views to make sure you don't lose them when you start to work on other parts of the model. It's actually usually at this stage, and I'll just turn off the save frames for now, that I'll start to set up a new kind of set of windows in order to work on my model from this point onwards. So what I usually do is I go back into this kind of four window frames and what we'll do is we're gonna set up our camera to be on the right hand side here. We're just going to sort of pan these frames in just so we've got our sort of camera angle set up there. And then we're also going to change this top view here to become our new perspective view. So we're just going in here, set view and changing it to perspective. And then we're going to put this on a kind of ghosted as well. I don't really need the front view, so I'm just going to minimize this down. And sometimes it's useful to have a top view as well to see the model in plan so we can just keep that in the bottom corner but essentially this is going to become my working view on the left hand side and this allows me to start sort of modeling extra pieces in and we can start to see how they affect that camera on the right so it's useful having your camera constantly present when you're working on your model adding textures and things because we can start to see one-to-one -one how different things in our scene will affect that camera view there so essentially we've now kind of set up our view we're happy with that angle and i think the last thing i'm going to do in this video is just to start to dial in that environmental lighting to just make sure it really matches the qualities that i want you'll notice that when i start my interactive render if i'm not in that camera window it will start rendering out whichever the active window is which is this perspective one 
So in order to make sure we're rendering that camera, always click in the window when you start that interactive render there. And as you can see here, it's all quite kind of in shadow, the building. We do have a dusky sort of view, so it will be quite dark at this environmental level. But there is some sunlight from the sunset coming in, so I want to sort of tone that round so we've got a little bit of light on the front of our building. In order to kind of move and rotate the environment map, we can actually do that back in the settings. If we go back to our textures, which we set up in the previous video, under sky, under texture placement, you can see we've got this rotate H and V value. Now if we take the rotate H value and start to type in a degrees number here, so this is 50 degrees rotation, it will actually spin that HDRI around and you can see that it's slightly moved here and we're getting it from a slightly different angle. Now I know for this particular view that an angle of around 90 works quite well. And you can see we've got a little bit of light on the front of this surface and a bit of shadow on this kind of side element. And you can just play around with this value until you get a sort of lighting that you need. And you see that it changes quite a lot. If we put it on a 200 rotation for example, it suddenly becomes a lot darker and the light's coming in from the right hand side and there, lighting up the scene. So it all depends on kind of exactly where you want your light to be coming from in the shot. And I think for this, we're gonna want the light coming in and hitting this front face as so. So once you're happy with that, we can then kind of close up that environment tab and we've got that lighting set up. So we're gonna finish this video here on setting up our camera angle and dialing in our environment lighting. And in the next video, we're gonna be looking at how to start to add in textures and materials into this view to start to kind of liven up the image and give it some materiality. So thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.